G'day. Now, if I assume correctly, you probably have one or two questions circulating in your head right now. One, who the hell is this guy? And two, how do I get a killer body like that? To answer your first question, my name is Cristiano, professional Australian at Jiu Jitsu X. Why do I look like this? Well, to be honest, I kind of blew through my budget with that intro video, and this was all I could string together with what I had left. <sighs> anyway, enough about me. Let's dive into the real reason we came here, and that's to break down the secrets of some of Jiu Jitsu's best athletes to reveal the techniques, tactics, strategies, and everything in between. In a little program I like to call... Well, <laughs> well, how did that get there? Anyway, we're going to be pulling apart the sequence of events that led Joshua Roy Hinger to gold in the 2018 IBJJF Nogi World Championships. Specifically, we'll be looking at the sequence Josh used in this match and in many others to take the fight from the feet to the ground and finish in quick succession. To do this, we're going to break down the sequence into four critical parts. First the underhook snap down, then the rollover, then the chin strap, and then going into chin on back control before we move into finishing the north-south choke. And as a little bonus, I'm going to give you an option to finish with the anaconda when things go wrong. Okay, so let's start off by taking a look at the underhook snap down. Okay, first things first, check out the grip fighting. Specifically, check out the palm down grip Josh takes over his opponent's same side wrist. The purpose of this style of grip is that it makes it super difficult for the opponent to break and achieve any kind of control between your arm and your body, for example, underhooks or body locks. So how does it do this? Well, in order to break the grip, his opponent actually has to circle his arm outwards towards the opening between Josh's thumb and fingers. Circling inwards, like he would normally like to do, actually works in Josh's favor because it works towards his palm. Now, circling outwards actually gives Josh the opportunity to start moving towards his own underhook entry. Josh's opponent is actually savvy to this tactic, and soon after he circles his wrist to freedom, he immediately seeks to block Josh's hand. However, this isn't too much of a problem, because Josh can go straight into the collar tie, which is the other integral part of the underhook snapdown. And as soon as he frees his other hand, he opens up a clear path to the underhook. Now this is a super crucial point to note here. Once you lock on the underhook snapdown position, it is important that you keep your head at an angle to your opponent. Doing so will give you more control over your opponent, it will block their vision into what they're doing and it will help you steer them. And while this angle may seem to be non-existent in competition footage due to the opponent's resistance to the position, trust me, it is there, however acute it may be. And being diligent in its application will be the key to your success in this position. Because without it, you won't be doing jiu-jitsu. You'll be doing this. And one of the coolest things about initiating this sequence with the unhook snapdown is that it can be done both proactively and defensively. Okay, that brings us to the second part of our sequence, the rollover. Now, even though Josh has been successful with the snapdown, he is in a front headlock control position, which means his opponent's hips can move and they can scramble. This is no doubt why Josh reversed the rollover as a tactic. This benefits him by being able to put his opponent flat on their back, which will curb some of that scramble and give him an opportunity to advance position. Now, the rollover can both be applied proactively or defensively. In this situation here, we see that Josh's opponent is on top and kind of comfortable with the base, so Josh goes for the proactive measure, where he switches through to this butterfly-style hook position and uses that to elevate his opponent. Now, when it comes to the more defensive application, this is where things get a little bit tricky. This is because the opponent is usually in a high state of scramble, or, you know, very adamant in scrambling from here. So, unlike our previous position where Josh was able to put the butterfly hook on the inside, we're going to have to do a little bit of a variation here. So, have you figured out what it is yet? Well, if you said to revert to an outside hook, to anchor yourself to your opponent so when they do scramble you're just like going along for the ride, well you get a gold star champion. And I gotta tell you, I don't give many of them out. All right, that brings us to our third third position already. Okay, cool, the chin strap. Josh's favorite, my favorite, and clearly his opponent's favorite. So what's the big deal about chin straps? Well, there's a common misconception that people have when they see Josh compete in that when they see him get to the front headlock position, they immediately assume that he you know, essentially just grabs people's necks and starts squeezing from there. But this couldn't be further from the truth. And while Josh does look like he's a bit of a scrambler, there is method to his madness. He is always seeking to get a better position. And while yes, the chin strap will eventually facilitate the hingotine while making his opponent's life a living hell, its application this early in the scenario is actually to curb some of the scramble. And as you can see, 
Utilizing the chin strap this early in the sequence, rather than being a submission attempt, actually is used to hinder scrambles. And once the opponent gets on the back, that movement is completely nullified. Alrighty, that brings us to our next part in the sequence, the chin on back control, the old corner on the cob. So what's the key point about the chin on back control? Well, believe it or not, you're keeping your chin on your opponent's back. <laughs> Look, I know, this isn't rocket science, there's nothing really groundbreaking here, but this is one of those key fundamental concepts that you need to absolutely know about this position. I'd even go as far to say that overlooking this is probably one of the main reasons people lose the front headlock control position. Again, it's not rocket science. If you keep your head and chin above your opponents and behind their back, they won't be able to lift their head up. In saying that, this is fundamentally the only thing that will stop them from lifting their head up. And if you don't appreciate the importance of this concept, you will never have success in this position. And if you happen to lose it, then you better fight your ass off to get it back. Because even if you can't get the chin strap to slow down the scramble, at least with the chin on back control, your opponent's wheels will be spinning in the mud. All right, get your pens and papers out, because if you've ever had trouble finishing the north-south choke, I've got the goods for you. All righty, but first I want to address the elephant in the room. We all know Josh Hinger is the king of guillotines, so what the hell is he doing with north-south chokes? Well, essentially, when you become a master of something, everyone's going to see it coming. Well, they're going to expect it coming, at least. So what do most people do when they see a trademark move coming? That's right, they scramble. Just like the theme for the rest of our video. People know that Josh wants to finish his guillotines from either the mount or from the full guard. So they'll do everything they can to stop him from getting there. And when this is the case, it's always good to have a plan B. And in Josh's situation, it's the north-south choke. Now, we've already learned that Josh uses the chin strap to curb any kind of scrambling efforts, but there is one other tactic that he uses to stop that scramble dead in its track. And that tactic? Immediately seeking to get the underhook. Ladies and gentlemen, Exhibit A. Now, when it comes to troubleshooting the north-south choke, often your opponent will try to push your hips up to turn their head to the side. If your opponent can get their head to the side, it means you can't scoot down, you can't get a lock around your opponent's neck, and you can't be in an ideal position to finish the choke. An easy remedy for this is to maintain the chin strap. Doing so will allow you to ratchet your opponent's chin towards the mat. What you're looking for here is to build up potential energy, much like the compression of a spring. Once you release your opponent's chin, their head will recoil and open up a prime position for you to slot down and get into the north-south choke position. Troubleshooting tip part two is to avoid just dropping straight down, as doing so will give your opponent an opportunity to turn their head back towards you. Instead, you want to reinforce the position you just created by recoiling their neck by dropping your hip to the ground. Like so. Okay, so we've learned troubleshooting the control of the north-south choke. Now let's take a look at finishing it. Again, there's a common huge misconception about finishing the north-south choke in that once you get there, you just have to squeeze for your life. However, if you've ever done that, you've probably noticed that your central nervous system was gonna tap out before your opponent did. So what is the key to finishing the north-south choke? I mean, it's gotta be a hack. There's gotta be something that we're missing, right? And yes, in fact, there is a little detail that I guarantee will turbocharge your success rates when it comes to the north-south choke. All you need to do is look low on Josh's body and you'll find your answer. Uh, no, 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 lower than that. Hey, there it is. That's right, rather than squeezing yourself to victory, all you really need to do is to start to shuffle your hips in towards your opponent's neck. Try it out next time you're on the mat. All right, time for that bonus move, I promised you. Okay, so a good way to go about selecting the moves you actually use in your game is to base them on stimulus. So as we saw in the last section on the north-south choke, people were scrambling a lot, and when they were scrambled and landed on their back, that gave Josh the opening to go for the north-south choke. This time we're gonna look at a situation where instead of scrambling, their opponent is actually gonna be pushing against the hips. So this pushing against the hips essentially stops Josh from jumping up to the mount. However, by extending their arm, the opponent has now exposed himself to attack. Unfortunately, anaconda footage is quite hard to commentate over because things are kind of hidden. So as a backup, we're going to use some footage from Josh's course to Hingatine at Jiu-Jitsu X. So as you can see here, once the opponent has extended their arms, Josh actually curls his body up and pins one of those arms with his legs. Once he connects his hands, he now falls to the side. His perfect position here for the anaconda. Now this utilization of the legs is quite an important detail, as it goes a long way in facilitating the ideal position for the anaconda. Now, if you've got short arms like me, sometimes Cinching on and finishing the anaconda can be a little bit tricky. So trust me when I say this next detail is going to change your life. When looking to secure a grip around your own arm, first you should turn your thumb inwards. What this will mean is, when you grip, you'll be gripping at your tricep rather than at your bicep. Gripping at the tricep and when you rotate your thumb backwards will ensure that your arm is as deep as possible. Next, you want to use your opponent's back to help you facilitate the tighter grip. Walk it up like a spider, don't just try to swing it up wildly. 
And finally, you want to bring your legs up so that your knee is above your opponent's elbow to keep their arm in place and reduce any attempt to alleviate leverage. And it's as easy as that. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Cheat Codes and hopefully found some gold in there that you can copy and paste to your own game. If you want to learn more about the North-South Choke, the Anaconda, or Josh's famous finishing move, the Hinga Team, there's a special discount code waiting for you below in the description of this video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and all those other things you're supposed to do on YouTube, and I'll see you back here next time on the Cheat Codes, where we'll be breaking down some more match-winning techniques, tactics, strategies, and everything else in between. Until then, keep your chin up, unless you're on the mats.